it is my pleasure and honor to hand things over to Dr. Yoram Anikstein. Dr. Anikstein has the longest continuous experience with facet replacement technology. He is the head of spine and orthopedic departments at Asaf Harofei Medical Center and lecturer at Tel Aviv University's School of Medicine. Dr. Anikstein earned his medical degree from Hadassah Hebrew University and was a Leatherman Spine Fellow at the University of Louisville before returning to Israel and assuming the post of the head of the spine unit as Asaf Harofei Medical Center. Dr. Anikstein has presented at many Spine Society meetings, including NAS, AAOS, World Spine, Eurospine, and the AO Spine Symposium. He has over 60 publications and presentations, and with more than 15 years of clinical experience with the top system, it's really a pleasure to welcome Dr. Anikstein. Okay, hi, my name is Yoram Anikstein from Israel in Tel Aviv. Uh, and my disclosure is that, that I'm a consultant to Premier Spine, and I'm actually the medical monitor of Premier Spine uh, IDE study in the States. And uh, if I'm looking back, maybe 20 years ago when I came back from uh, my fellowship in the States, I made contact with a small Israeli company and we discussed the idea of doing a facet arthroplasty. These were the days of the golden era of motion preservation. And after the development that took maybe two years, uh, some of it with Professor Wilke and with, uh, with uh, Uwe Arnin, which is a very talented engineer, uh, this patent was registered. And the idea was to uh, create an implant that will restore the biomechanics and preserve the kinematics of the motion segments after destabilization. Uh, destabilization means after a very wide decompression that includes laminectomy and bilateral facetectomy. And on the left side, you see what I call the prototype device that we used since 2006 up to 2010. And then we have the current design that was used in the IDE study. Uh, the main three goals of this implant is to achieve a very wide decompression, uh, laminectomy, bilateral facetectomy, taking off the pars interarticularis. Uh, and here you can see the exiting nerve roots and the dural sacs completely decompressed. And then to treat uh, existing instability, usually uh, degenerative spondylolisthesis, and also treating the facet pain. The main concern on initial thoughts about this type of device, which is screw, uh, pedicle screw uh, device, is that the ped pedicle screw may get loose. We know very well that with pseudoarthrosis, when there is motion, eventually the screw may get loose, like you see on the left side on, the X, on this X-ray. Uh, so a lot of thought went into achieving good or better purchase of this screw. And the first one is using a surface treated screws like you see here. Uh, and this was tested uh, in vivo in a ship model showing better integration of the screw to the bone. And then there was another study that was done uh, in New York and published in Spine Journal in 2008, comparing the TOPS device to the Dynasys. Actually, the Dynasys was used as a fusionless fusion device. It is almost as stiff as fusion devices. And what was examined is the load and the moments on the pedicle screw throughout motion. And what they saw is that the load on the pedicle screw was much lower and more homogeneous with the tops compared to the dynasis. And this is relatedly related mainly to the stiffness of the dynasis compared to the tops. The tops has a lot of motion. So there's load sharing with the disc and the remain ligaments like the ALL and PLL. And the, uh, the, the fact that with the tops, you have cross link that interconnect two screws on the same vertebra. That means that you have a more homogeneous load on the screws and less uh, probability for screw loosening. And what we see after 14 years of clinical usage around Europe and Israel and in the States, uh, more than 5,000 screw implanted only 0.2% of screw loosening. So this was the main concern, but eventually we learned that uh, this is not a problem to look now. Now, the first study that was done uh, was uh, under the uh, Ministry of Health in Israel. They allowed us to do 10 cases. It was a pilot 
single arm, single center study, very small one, uh, very uh, similar criteria that what was used in the IDE study. And this was published in several papers, but this is the last one looking at the long-term long results after 11 years of study. Uh, we had a early failure with one of the 10 prostheses. This is only three months after implantation. You see this, the TOPS is locked in, a, in extension, and this patient was revised to fusion. But then all other nine cases are still in the spine of, the, uh, of these patients. Looking at 11 years, uh, very nice results. Looking at the uh, leg pain via VASCO, this decreased from 85 to less than 10 in two years, and then less than 20 in 11 years and VAS for the back pain, again, from 55 to 15 in 11 years. The Oslo Disability Index and the SF36 uh, show uh, good function of these patients. Uh, keep in mind that these patients were in their 60s when they operated, and 11 years later, they are now in their 70s with, uh, we expected, decrease, some in, decrease in function. Looking at the motion of the implant, we looked at seven years. This patient didn't want to repeat x-rays again and again. So we have seven year follow-up with that showed some decrease in motion with time. I'll show you uh, a case from this early study with a prototype device. This is a 52 year old male with neurogenic claudication. He was operated on December, 2006. This is his post-op x-rays. And then you can see the pre-op MRI on the left side compared to the 11-year follow-up MRI on the right side, almost no change in the degenerative uh, finding on the spine. This is the adjacent level of the 3-4 level above the implant with no stenosis, no severe facet atrosis or spondy. This is the level that was operated, widely decompressed, and this is the adjacent level below the implant again. Uh, canal is open, no spondylolisthesis. So at 11 years, we had no screw loosening. We had one early revision surgery due to implant failure at three months, but this did not repeat itself. And then there was a high level of satisfaction and, and fact function. Looking at the MRI at 11 years, uh, adjacent level stenosis was seen in one case at 11 years, adjacent level spondylolisthesis in no case, and what you can see here is some early degenerative changes in the facet at the level above, at the L3, L4. This was seen in four cases out of nine. So this is how it looks, some facet fluid uh, on MRI. Now, uh, since 2010, uh, we, used, we had a commercial use of the new implant, the, the one that was used in the IDE studies, uh, and uh, we had it in 158 single level uh, TOPS cases done in my institute, the uh, revision rate was 5.7%. Looking at the revision uh, after this more than 10 years of experience, these are the nine revision. The first two on the table on the right were done elsewhere, not in my institution. So we don't have the full data about, uh, about the reason for revision, but we have the data for seven revision we see two revision were done for uh, adjacent level disease, and this was revised to extend uh, extending a fusion device to the tops. We have this uh, option to interconnect re uh, fusion to the tops. The other, other seven revisions were just replacing the tops that failed with a new device. So in 15 years of experience, of clinical experience with this device, since the early design and then the current one. We had good clinical results in our hand, better than what we see with fusion, mild deterioration of motion over time, very low adjacent segment disease rate, and actually no screw loosening, and 6% revision rate, which is comparable to or even better than what we see with revision cases. So when you... Uh, think of using this implant, I think you should consider three main key points. The first is patient selection. In our cohort, in our study, we had strict patient selection. This device was intended, was 
designed to treat spondylolisthesis with stenosis. It was not designed to treat disc problems. So keeping this strict indication will lead to success. The other key point is doing a very wide decompression by taking the lamina completely and complete facetectomy on both sides and having a, a, a free space pedicle to pedicle. And the third key point is following the surgical technique, at least on the first cases, using the special de uh, devices that were designed to implant this device. Now, who, who is the right patient for having the first case? It should be a, a patient between 50 to 70 year old with leg dominant pain, and his main complaint should be claudication. He should have degenerative spondylolisthesis and severe or at least significant stenosis on the MRI and no significant disc problem. This means no disc herniation, but also I look at modic changes. I don't like to see modic type changes in the disc with this patient. On physical exam, I like to see him bending forward completely painlessly. That means the disc is not a problem. The disc is not symptomatic and he has a positive extension test, meaning it's mainly a facet uh, problem or and stenosis. So thank you very much. And I'd like to thank you for having me uh, speaking in this uh, webinar. Thanks.